By now, you should have a working self-driving Arduino car. You've learned how to use infrared sensors to detect lane lines and automatically stay in a lane, and an ultrasonic sensor to detect obstacles and automatically stop. Now, it's time to program some more advanced behaviors that will depend on the environment or track you have set up to test your car. Let's take a look at some hypothetical examples. Here is a top-down view of a simple oval-shaped track. You already know how to make your car drive forward, and how to use the infrared sensors to detect the lines. So, for example, if your car starts drifting off the right-hand side of the road, the right-hand sensor would see the line, and you know you need to make your car turn left. You also know how to use the ultrasonic sensor to detect an obstacle and make the car stop. But you might decide to take different actions when you detect an obstacle. For example, maybe you want to program your car to drive around the obstacle. Or maybe the obstacle represents a fallen tree across the road that you can't drive around, so you want to program your car to turn around. If you're doing this activity as a class, there could even be other cars on the road, and you might need to decide what to do when you encounter another car. However, it's important to note that real autonomous cars use cameras and computer vision to help identify obstacles. So, for example, they can tell the difference between a car, a pedestrian, and a tree. The sensors on your car are much simpler. The ultrasonic sensor can only detect the distance to an obstacle in front of it, but it can't tell what that obstacle is. So, for example, it can't tell the difference between a small obstacle in the middle of the road, a large obstacle the entire way across the road, or another car. The same goes for the infrared sensors. They can individually detect the difference between light and dark surfaces, but they cannot tell if a light line represents a lane line on the side of the road or a crosswalk going across the road. This means you will need to agree on some predefined parameters for your track, mainly what the obstacles and lane lines represent. Note that this will also depend on the shape of your track. For example, you might have forks, intersections, or even two-lane roads. Pause the video here and make a list of these parameters. Especially if you are working as a class, make sure you all agree on them. You want everyone to be following the same rules of the road. Once you do that, you will need to design an algorithm or set of instructions to control your car's behavior as it drives. This can get more complicated than basic lane following or obstacle detection when you start combining multiple types of sensors. For example, let's look at driving towards a small obstacle in the middle of the road. Say that you decide to program your car to drive around the obstacle. That would be a problem if your code also tells your car to turn to the left when the right-hand sensor detects the line, because that will immediately make the car turn and crash into the obstacle. To successfully drive around the obstacle, you would need to temporarily ignore the readings from your infrared sensors allowing your car to intentionally drive over the lane lines. There are several different ways you can represent your algorithm. One is to use pseudocode. Pseudo means false. This is where you write out the structure of your program without worrying about the exact Arduino functions you're going to use and the syntax, or things like commas and parentheses. So, for the example I just described, the pseudocode could be something like this. First, we start the program, then we enter an infinite loop. In that loop, we're going to check if there's an obstacle in front of the car. If there is, we're going to drive around it while ignoring the infrared sensor readings. Only after checking that, then we will check the infrared sensors. If the right infrared sensor sees a line, we know we need to turn left. And if the left infrared sensor sees a line, we know we need to turn right. If none of those conditions are met, then we know it's safe to drive forward. Another way to represent your algorithm is a flowchart. This is a graphical way to represent the flow of your program using symbols. So, for example, using the same program that we just wrote pseudocode for, first we would start the program. We represent the start with an oval. Then we're going to check our first condition. We represent that using a diamond. Is there an obstacle in front of the car? If yes, then we're going to take an action, which we represent with a rectangle. In this case, that's drive around the obstacle while ignoring the infrared sensor readings. If there is no obstacle in front of the car, then we're going to check if the right infrared sensor sees a line. 
If yes, we're going to turn left to stay on the road. If the right infrared sensor does not see a line, then we're going to check if the left infrared sensor sees a line. If yes, we know we need to turn right to stay in the road. Finally, if none of those conditions are met, then we know it's safe to drive forward. But we don't want our program to end there because then we would just drive forward forever without ever checking our sensors again. We have to loop way back up to the beginning and check again to see if there's an obstacle in front of the car. So each one of those action blocks needs to loop back to the beginning of the program. Both of these options provide a high level overview of your program where you're not worried about exactly what Arduino functions you're going to use. For example, in the block for is there an obstacle in front of the car, we're not worried about the exact code that we need to operate the ultrasonic sensor. However, sometimes you might want to specify parts of your algorithm in more detail. For example, driving around an obstacle while ignoring infrared sensor readings, it might be helpful to define exactly what that means. So say that we want to hard code our car to drive in a certain shape to get around an obstacle while ignoring sensor readings. We can represent that with both pseudocode and a flowchart. The pseudocode could be for a function to drive around an obstacle that consists of a series of hard-coded actions, like turning and driving forward, to drive in a certain shape. Finally, this function isn't a loop, so when it's done, we will go back to the main program. We can represent the same thing with a flowchart that just consists of a series of actions of turning and driving straight, and again, when that flowchart is over, we would go back to the main program. Now it's your turn. Pause the video here and write out your algorithm using one or both of these methods. It's important to note that you can change your algorithm in the future, so you might want to start with something simple and then move on to more complex algorithms once you've gotten the simple one working. Once you've designed your algorithm, then it's time to convert it to actual Arduino code. However, if you followed along with all the other videos in this series, then this won't be as difficult as it seems. You should already have working code for things like steering your car and taking readings from the different sensors. So the main part you will need to figure out now is how you will implement if-else statements inside your loop function to match your algorithm. This code is an example from a previous video that only does lane following using the infrared sensors but doesn't use the ultrasonic sensor. Since everyone's track and algorithm will be different, there isn't a single correct answer for us to show here. The final program that you write will be up to you, but you should have all of the pieces you need to write it. So pause the video here and make a single program that uses all of the pieces you've learned so far. You'll use the H-bridge to control your car's motors and steering, and you'll take readings from the ultrasonic sensor and the infrared sensors. Then, you'll need to fill in the structure of your algorithm inside the loop function using actual Arduino code and not pseudocode. Once you've finished your code, it's time to upload it and test. Try not to get frustrated if things don't work perfectly on the first try. This is okay. You may need to tweak parameters in your code, like the speed of your motors, or you might need to go back and redesign all or part of your algorithm. Again, once you've gotten a basic algorithm working, you can move on to more complex tracks and challenges.